Hey everybody, uh, just wanted to, I guess, hop on here and give everybody a quick update since it's the 10th. Yeah, since it's the 10th, I'm supposed to be getting discharged on the 21st, but, uh, all of the first update is... I guess somehow over the weekend, uh, I ended up catching a UTI. So they did blood work or uh, a, a UA, sorry. They did a UA on Monday after I had a fever, like just a little over 100. And I was also really warm. It took a long time to just try to cool off. But, as far as everything else, I've got, let me see, I've got two more treatments of antibiotics for today, and then just 30 uh, more treatments of antibiotics through my port. Um, I have been exercising as much as possible because um, they are going to discharge me. As, as almost a quad, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to say a quad because I still have the use of both arms for now. But, yeah, like, I can't feel anything up to here. Like, just, well, I don't feel that. I can hear it, and I can't feel it. When it comes to, oh, when it comes to uh, PT, the lady came by yesterday. I I wasn't expecting her. I had, I had no idea. But I was dressed. And she had asked me if I had gotten in my chair more than the one time that I got into the chair with her last week on Friday or something. And I told her, yeah, I, uh, that day I got in my chair a total of three times. And then the following day. I did an additional two times, and then since then, got in my chair by myself that day when they didn't, when nobody would uh, heat uh, my lunch up. So I got in my chair that day by myself, and then also on, uh, I think Monday, yeah, Monday before the um championship game between uh Yukon and Purdue so pretty much when it comes to physical therapy and trying to make sure like I know how to transfer I'm finished with that so uh so I, I I'm not even gonna like mash the call button or ask for uh, somebody to be up here if I need to get in my chair because I'm already passed I can get my chair just fine it's no big deal and then when oh when uh on Thursday when the uh, PT got done after I came back and got into my bed there was a knock at the door and come to find out it was OT occupational therapy and being that I had my basketball shorts on my shoes on he just comes in, introduces himself, and then he just like pauses and was just like, I I don't really think there's anything I can help teach you. <laughs> and I just laughed and I was like, nah, I don't believe there is. So I learned how to do all of this back in 2009. Just didn't expect to be in this kind of position in 2024. But, um... As far as still having uh, air pockets strapped to my spinal cord, they're still there um, because of all the swelling and inflammation is obviously still right around the T8 area where my exposed nerves that make me a T8 are located. They are just basically being squeezed like, you know, like a, like a python squeezes its prey. Um, so I've been through two different steroids for that. One was a five day thing where you do five, uh, five injections for 
injections three two and one i finished that on easter sunday and then it took three yeah three a little over three weeks being in here before i finally found out who like my doctor is and so her name is laquinta so i i went ahead and wrote down you know, like, you know all the questions all the concerns that i've had everything that people have said to me since being here like joking about um you know like oh you know like you don't have to worry about the air pockets because the worst it can do is you could become paralyzed and then they just laugh and we're just like oh you kind of beat them to it and like you know like patted me on my stomach or arm like i'm a like i'm an animal so <laughs> should have bit the shit out of them because obviously um it's not working uh the antibiotics uh they're not working against uh the inflammation and swelling the second dose of steroids are not working against uh, the infection. They never did. And it's at the point now to where they don't treat something like this that aggressively. They just rather see how things play out. And then yesterday, there were like, it was like an older man, older than me at least, older than 38. He's at least in his 50s, prop like at least. And then there was another doctor. She was a female. Looks like she just got done sucking on a lemon. But they came in and they're like, well, we'll be your doctors for this week, blah, blah, blah. And um, I had told them that on Monday, uh, when Monday morning rolled around, uh, I've, called, I've already called UNC Chapel Hill. I've called Duke just to inquire if they have ever, like, ran into the same issue or if they know how to remove air pockets if they could possibly help and as far as duke i have to have a referral sent from my doctor's office so that means i have to wait until the 21st when i'm discharged the 22nd um uh, they may end up sending us a referral from my doctor's office because i really doubt he's going to send it um, on the 19th, which would be Friday before I'm discharged just because of the way they do things. But when it came, when it comes to UNC, I had a call back yesterday and the girl who called back, she said that, that this was like a more like important question that her supervisor or whoever is above her told her that, um, instead of, you know, like returning my call, trying to discuss things to automatically give me like the neurosurgeon, like the whole entire neuro neurological center, their phone number, because as serious as it sounded, they just wanted me to talk to them instead. So it takes anywhere from 24 to 48 hours to hear back from uh, Chapel Hill. Haven't heard from them today, so hopefully they will call tomorrow. And, oh yeah, the, the two doctors who came in yesterday, the, I, don't, I forget what the guy's name was, but the lady doctor, her name is Francine. So I always try to remember their names or their last names because I, I try to be as punctual as possible or, or I just try to show respect by saying like, yes, ma'am, no, sir, uh, no, no, like, no, ma'am, yes, sir, or whatever it is. But when she came in today, um, I, you know, I just asked her if, like, being that they found the air pockets, like, when I was first in here, they even told me what they have to do to take care of it, like, the procedure, like, procedure-wise. Because I, I asked, I was just like, well, they told me that if it was anybody else who could walk, um, basically like a normal person, somebody who's not like me in a wheelchair, sorry, uh, somebody that's not like me in a wheelchair, they said if they found air pockets, then they would be sending them to emergency surgery because it, it could cause paralysis. But, so, I had just asked her, I said, it, it kind of doesn't make sense to me because... 
If I was going to be in here for a total of seven weeks, I don't understand why they would not go ahead and do the procedure to remove the risks of me, well, of what has already happened to me, happen. And all I could say was, you know, it just, it just feels like I'm not as important as like other people. And I mean, I even mentioned that to her, but she didn't care. She just, she just wanted to uh, leave the room. Like she was very short when it came to answers because here they also have a dentist and because the water is like not filtered or they say it's filtered but it's not because it has tore my skin up my mouth is completely raw like my tongue is swollen up uh like the last time i was using a little bit of ice just to put juice in to drink like it would touch the corners of my lip or on both corners and it basically just dried them out so bad that it cracked them so i had to start putting like this uh like vaseline type lotion kind of stuff on it and that was a couple of days ago so now like they're not as bad i can kind of open my mouth it doesn't hurt that bad but as far as the dentist she was telling me like i was trying to tell her like you know i have one tooth on the top and then she was just like, just what's the problem? I, I was just like, uh, well, I got, um, I got one tooth that has a crown on it. But because of how thin the crown was, it's like breaking away. So every time I breathe in, there's a really sharp, like sharp freaking like needle pain. And then I can't help it, but I have like a chip that came off of this tooth right here. I have a chip that came off of like the tooth right in front of my canine that actually it's uh no the tooth behind my canine like I'm, I can literally fill up my tongue it's like a tiny little hole um and that's just because of like how my body has reacted to the medications having such a dry like bad dry mouth because I brush my teeth every day I use mouthwash but here the toothpaste and mouthwash they give you is not like the name brand. The mouthwash even says non-alcohol-free -alco mouthwash. So it doesn't matter um, how many times I brush my teeth and everything because I would literally brush my teeth and then on like, like the insides of like my cheeks, I could feel like little pieces of skin that I would literally have to uh, bite and like pull off but I ended up taking my toothbrush and just like scraping as hard as I could and once I did that like I look at my toothbrush and that was horrible like all of like this like raw broken down skin had like just collected on I mean glad I got it out but my mouth burns like hell when I try to drink certain things and every time I eat <laughs> I feel like I when I I feel like I'm gonna throw up and if I have like the smallest burp it just sets my whole entire like this whole entire area all the way up to my throat it just sets it on fire so I have to ask for like Maalox during the daytime and they give me a, a little cup and it doesn't even it's only 10 milliliters that they will allow me to have at one time so I just I just thought that was the craziest thing because if that's the only thing that can help like coat my stomach and not like burp and it be on fire, I thought they would at least just give me the little cup that it comes in. It's only um thirty milliliters and it's not it's just it's just like a little shot, not even not even a whole shot. So I can't wait until I'm discharged for that because they can't really monitor or say how much Maalox I can have at one time, which all I need is just a full cap full that for an adult. But, but also, um, the doctor, when I had mentioned, you know, the air pockets and how they told me they know what the, proce the procedure is, they've done it before, blah, blah, blah. 
she basically just like she had no answer she was just like well I will just, uh, you know, have somebody from the neurological center come up and maybe explain it to you better so you understand. And so it's like, yeah, I understand, like, what's going on. I understand that they say the reason they refuse to do it is because I could catch another infection. But, I mean, I've, I've already had four out of five major infections. I have a UTI right now. And all they've done is leave me on my antibiotics. And they're just like, oh, well, that should be enough. Because when I spoke to both doctors yesterday, I told them, you know, I'm pretty sure y'all will be telling me to go home on the 21st. And I just asked him, I said, but with my situation, that mean like, does that mean the bone infection is healed, but the inflammation and swelling won't go away? Or, or what? And their an- his answer is, well, the way we see it, being that you have been here, you will be on a full seven-week dose of antibiotics. They said that should be enough antibiotics to take care of you because there's no antibiotics that I can take orally when I go home. So, yeah, it's just going to be me, like, facing everything on the 21st. And I'm very blessed to still have my dad, but I'm not gonna sit there and ask him to like go out of his way, go out of his way to help me. So it's just something that I have to figure out. Um, because honestly, when it comes down to it, I don't have anybody that I could call and ask for help, and they would be there. So that's why there's a lot of decisions that have to be made. Um, it just, I mean, it just like goes through my mind all day every day because I'm up at I'm up at like 6 a.m. if not by 4 or 5 because now that I'm completely numb on my back all the way up to my shoulder blades the symptoms for a UTI are normally a lower back pain where it burns uh, of course the odor coloration of your urine but now for me being that I'm just so damn lucky the symptoms have basically just knotted up all of the muscles and everything in between my shoulder blades. So yesterday morning, I literally sat up like a mummy just out of nowhere at 5 a.m. And I sat there from 5 a.m. until 6 a.m. just trying to stretch every way possible. And finally, I just, like, some reason, I rolled both shoulders at the same time. And when I did, like, it, you can hear every single bone and stuff, like, crack and pop and like it's not just once and it's done but every time I roll my shoulders they will pop and crack every time and at first I was like well obviously well hope like probably it can't be heard only just me because it's happening to me but when my best friend stopped by yesterday like I asked him like like do you hear this or is it just in my head And so when I did it the first time, he was like, dude, he was like, that was loud. Like, not just, like, where he can hear it, but, like, he could hear almost every crack. Like, every single popping crack. And it's not like pop, like, cracking your knuckles where you just have, you know, like, five digits on each finger. It's not like just ten cracks. This goes all the way across my shoulder blade in the very middle of my shoulder blade to where the top of my rods and screws are. So, um, yeah, (laughs) that's what I'm dealing with right now. So when it comes to the doctors, I have learned to just keep my mouth shut because it doesn't matter what I say. They are not going to do anything to try to help me further besides just keep me on the antibiotics. And see, I have such a great nursing staff, though, like that. That is one thing that has helped carry me through this is having a wonderful nursing staff because during the daytime, like if there's something malfunctions with the the machine, I know how to fix it and they have showed me how to fix it so that way they don't have to come back to the room. Um, So if it like starts beeping saying like it's occluded, meaning that the the fluid is not going through smoothly, I just hit restart. 
when it's done, it'll go beep, 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 and that means the antibiotics are through. So I could either call and have them uh, flush with saline to, to get everything down, or um, go an additional 30 minutes hooked up and then letting the saline solution drip slowly. But I prefer just having to be unhooked and having the saline solution go through. And then today I need to get my pick line, or not the pick line, but my bandage uh, changed. Just because on this side, you can see like a little flap, right? Like right there where it has uh, the adhesive is not as strong as it was. And I thought my nurse was going to do that um, around like 12 after like I finished lunch. So I went ahead and I cleared like this entire table off, um, even though the both times I've had it done, they just needed half the table, but I mean, I can understand some people like want it cleaner than others, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm just, uh, just laying here right now trying to like, I guess, kill time until either, until either like it's ready to have the bandage changed and she comes in and I'm like part of that because she's never done it before and so she said she wanted to like watch a couple videos um to make sure she knows what she's doing and then of course i'm going to be keeping an eye on it um to make sure that she keeps it um like like the the cord going straight and then when it comes to these two there's padding in between because the first like week and a half it was just like having those open just having uh, the ports just like rest up against your my arm in between the middle, it was just it was just eating away at me. It hurt. So the last time the nurse changed it, she made sure to put like to put it that way to where when they come down, they don't rest directly on my skin. And that's probably been the best part. Like having a pick line is that she actually helped me out by putting you know something in between my skin and the actual uh, little two little ports that come out but but yeah that's pretty much it um as far as i know because the only thing else i'm doing now is of course waiting for unc or duke to um well, not do it because I still have to get them to send a referral from my family's doctor's office because they tried telling me here yesterday that that is something that they don't do here. Um, and they started talking about HIPAA law. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. Um, and, yeah, so 12 days, hopefully I will be able to have a referral sent to Duke Hospital. But... Like I, it's like I said, I've got just 10 days or 11 days left, or actually 10. If they discharge me on the 21st, I don't believe they're going to keep me here that day. They'll probably tell me I can go home anytime or after lunch or during during that time, I'm guessing. That's normally what time people are discharged from what I could see, hear, and tell. But other than that, I really don't have any more news. Um, I wish I had like better news, but that's just it. That's just, uh, that's just ECU, uh, health facility. Honestly, if you ever needed a hospital to go to, I, I would definitely not recommend this hospital. Um, the only thing good about this hospital is the nursing staff. Like there are some really nice nurses, like, like really nice, let's see, like really nice nurses, really nice CPs, the charge nurse, there's one charge nurse like that, it just gets to her head and she acts like, well, I'm not the nurse in charge, I'm actually like a supervisor or a doctor and all this blah, 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 because she's always trying to get in the middle of my stuff um, and she's never said like, she's just dumb. So <laughs> that's really all I can say. But I wasn't trying to make a, a 25 minute video. I was hoping to keep it under 10 minutes, but of course I always talk so much. Um, I, mean, I guess if I didn't talk, I'd probably be going crazy. But 
or maybe I'm already there. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I just wanted to catch everybody up, um, let them know that I will be leaving the hospital with absolutely no feeling all the way up to here. Um, and, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, it is kind of scary, but then again, it is what it is. It's life. Life isn't always fair, but I'm still here, so I guess that's that. Um, because around the 23rd, 24th, I'm going to be trying my best, or probably the following weekend, I'm going to be going fishing at the pier. Because that's my passion, and being stuck in the hospital for 42 or 42 days, I just believe that I deserve a little break. Um, so... And I want to take Bear with me, too, as well as my dad, of course, because it's time for Bear to get out and see more than just where he lives at, the drive home from Virginia, like driving down to where I'm originally from. But, uh, yeah, that's it. So I'm not going to keep talking. Uh, I've pretty much said everything I needed to, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And if anything does pop up or happen... Uh, I will, you know, post an update or write something, but, um, yeah, I mean, until next time, uh, it's, it's been nice, uh, so I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their week, uh, has a rest of the, like a good rest of the day, so I will be seeing you guys later, goodbye, yo.